okay hi everyone welcome back and in this update we are going to check out qnt's chart and see what is going on specifically in the short term because i do sort of kind of see some optimistic signs but before we get into all that and tell you what might be next at first we are going to talk about the concept of programmable money and at the beginning we are just going to simply talk about the basics but i promise you this is not going to be the boring things you see you have probably heard of the term programmable money thrown around in my channel specifically but if you are not a regular viewer you probably heard of it in crypto circles fintech panels or maybe even some central banks pdfs but this isn't actually any central bank pdf no this is fed's website and this article was published back in 2021 and it has a lot of fascinating stuff in it so we are going to do a deep dive probably i'm gonna say this is going to take a couple of videos but i promise you at the end you are going to find a lot of very very interesting things so are you ready let's start and the first question is from fed's pov specifically what does programmable money actually mean you see when it comes to programmable money we are not just talking about digital money no it's very important to understand that we had digital money for decades for example think about credit cards maybe paypal when most so on and so forth these are old news programmable money is way different this is money that can literally do stuff on its own like for example follow instructions maybe you set the rules and the money behaves accordingly automatically with no middleman and no manual triggers now if you want to make this concept work you need two very important ingredients from fed's perspective first it has to be digital not just a number in a spreadsheet but something that lives on a ledger for example think of blockchain or maybe something else second it needs logic code rules behavior that is the programmable part now here is where it gets kind of interesting you see in this very important article that i would actually highly suggest to just give it a read yourself if you have time the federal reserve introduced a very interesting concept called coherence guarantee that sounds fancy but it's actually kind of a game changer you see this means the value of money and also its behavior are absolutely locked together you cannot separate them the programmability isn't just an add-on in this scenario it is absolutely baked into the money itself and without this guarantee programmable money is just going to be just a frankenstein mix of all text maybe like a database here some scripts there but with it you got a whole new category of money not a service but a full-blown product now let's talk about architecture you see there are two main ways to keep track of money number one you got account based systems think for example ethereum or your regular bank account you got balances and you move money from one account to another simple but not necessarily great for tracking individual units number two is something called utxo based systems and this my friends is btc's style every single coin in the scenario is like a digital banknote you can trace it customize it and even apply rules to each and every single unit which makes it more granular and more flexible and when it comes to programmability there are three main approaches approach number one is transaction scripting meaning each unit of money carries its own little script that is bitcoin model it's powerful but not super user friendly approach number two is virtual machines and this my friends is ethereum playground and in this scenario smart contracts live on chain and can be reused it is like having a programmable layer built into the system and finally last but not least approach number three is using apis you see traditional platforms like for example paypal use apis to simulate programmability however this is actually quite fragile why because essentially you are stacking layers on top of layers and these aren't really natural connections hence why this is actually breakable i would say quite easily now here is the cool part if you have been following quant's flow research you will notice that they have been talking about some very very similar stuff 
but just from like a different angle for example point number one this article and also quantflow they both highlight the need for native programmability not bolted on top of features but core logic embedded into the money itself point number two they both emphasize traceability and also control and whether it's going to be for example utxo style tracking or maybe smart contract logic the goal is very much the same it is absolutely precision and point number three they both are pushing toward a future where money isn't just a medium of exchange no it's actually going to be hopefully a programmable asset with built-in intelligence so it may seem like that the fed and quant flow might be coming from different worlds because one is a central bank the other one is like a deep in crypto project but they are absolutely circling the same idea programmable money that is coherent traceable and smart by design now let's be real and honest for a second you see just because something can be programmed doesn't really mean it is absolutely safe or reliable no if you are building a system where money can act on its own you have got to think about abuse prevention so with that in mind here are some things that can go wrong in this scenario and how systems try to prevent it number one is something called denial of service attacks meaning if anyone can spam the system with requests it will absolutely crash this is exactly why most networks have built in defenses like for example race limits or maybe rejecting invalid transactions the second way to prevent abuse is economic deterrence you see in this scenario someone may want to flood the network but do not worry that's absolutely fine because it is actually going to cost them big time you see transaction fees absolutely act like a toll gate in this scenario and they make people think twice before abusing the system and finally the third way of preventing abuse is by execution limits you see smart contracts cannot simply run forever there is a cap on how much computation they can actually demand and for example ethereum uses gas for this run out of gas and your contract will halt these trade-offs aren't just technical they are strategic and you're balancing in the scenario flexibility with control now let's talk about what keeps the system honest because tech loan isn't just enough i promise you that you need incentives reasons for people and institutions to play fair so let's talk incentives with some real examples number one is public blockchain and for example bitcoin and ethereum use proof of work and economic incentives to keep the system coherent example number two is private systems and for example you got banks and fintechs offering programmable features through apis however coherence here depends on their business model if their incentives shift so does the reliability of the whole system now imagine programmable money baked by a central bank in this case you essentially one way or the other end up having a cbdc that could be number one programmable by design number two baked by government reputation and number three enforced by legal frameworks this is not just a tech upgrade it's actually a whole new monetary layer with built-in trust and control so this was part one of these three-part series on programmable money we have covered fundamentals the architecture the trade-offs and the incentives in the next videos we will try to dive a bit deeper into number one how q and and specifically over leisure could potentially fit into this landscape number two why quant's approach to coherence is a bit different from both public and also private systems and number three how this tech could potentially reshape enterprise finance compliance and cross-border payments and if you are into the future of money not just some crypto hype but real actual infrastructure you need to stick around because we are just getting started so i know for those of you who have been waiting for the chart analysis these might be a bit boring but trust me if you believe on a project you need to do your full research and think about these kinds of stuff okay it's very very important to understand that i am a trader i'm not going to deny that but overall i am mainly i would say a mid to long-term investor so 
these are the things that i really really care about but no worries having said all that now let's go on the live chart and see what is going on specifically in the short term okay here we are and if we remember the last time that we talked about q and t we were i think around these areas and the idea was that most likely this move down is going to continue a little bit more in order to take the loss all the way down here and hopefully hopefully at that point we are going to be able to argue that starting from this high we have completed a one two five wave down into wave three correction for four and yet another move on the downside into wave five which on a higher degree it's going to be into this c leg of this whole a b c running flat starting from not the highest side but actually from this point about let's say 124 dollars and as you can see our move up did actually continue a little bit and we got to somewhere around the 102 dollar region now here's a very important point if you want to be bullish on any chart okay you have to be able to find off of the recent lowest low of that chart a one two three four five this specific example is called an impulsive movement rules for it are we should not have overlapping of the waves between our wave two and four and in any kind of impulse wave three is just not allowed to be the smallest wave and that's actually correct for all sorts of five waves okay it's a big no-no in Elios waves and for our sub waves you know what's happening five up into wave one three and five and for wave two and four we can have different counts let's say wxy into four and show an abc structure into wave two now let's go on the live chart and see what is happening and first things first i'm not really sure if you like classic patterns but if you do well there is no denying that we are most likely having in this area a beautiful looking head and shoulder structure and you can say so far we are having our pullback phase to the next line right in here and if we get another move up in q and t in order to take this side you know what at that point we have confirmed this beautiful bullish structure and the question is what's going to be a likely target for it first things first i'm going to keep saying this in every single update you need to put your chart first on regular scale in order to be able to measure targets okay there is simply no measuring targets on logarithmic it's very very important to understand that and then you need to measure the height of your pattern and put it at your supposed breaking point this is giving you like a 115 dollar q and t which i actually do believe it is very much possible and we may even go quite a bit higher than that to like the 120 dollar region that is in my view also possible now in terms of Elios waves if we're gonna have another move on the upside then okay i'm willing to bet that at that point this is gonna be a one two three four five meaning maybe we have hit our final low so essentially all of these great signs should make me say you know what we have hit the low and we are looking bullish so you know what let's get a very strong move from the current point in order to have yet another magnificent phase of the bull run correct well the answer is yes we can absolutely argue that however there is unfortunately a slight problem in here and it comes down to this specific move down starting from the highest high about 118 bucks to about the lowest slow down here about 102 why let's zoom in and count some waves i think this is probably a one two three four five wave down followed by that most likely we are having probably yes an a b c flat structure on the upside and in my view this can be yet another one two three four five wave down so what happened so far we are able to identify two sets of five waves on the downside and this is kind of the key pay attention since in the recent phase up we actually took the highs in here well okay this means that these two supposedly sets of five waves down should be on the same degree meaning odds are instead of having a whole five wave in here we may end up having just the sub waves for an a b c zigzag and this is kind of sort of a problem for us why because this is actually able to open the doors to having something called an abc running or maybe an expanded flat which looks like this this is our initial move up into a correction for rate b which and we're going to take this initial low and another move on the upside into our ceiling now if 
for this move we are not going to take the height of our wave a okay this pattern is called an abc running flat if we are going to take it on the other hand then okay this is called an expanded flat nonetheless the sub waves for these patterns are going to be absolutely the same abc into a abc into b and this is the key pay attention one two three four five wave up into our ceiling so i'm trying to tell you there is actually a possibility which in it you may very well be able to identify off of the lowest low a5 wave up however that may not be necessarily part of the bullish process and in q and i'm not going to say right now like we are looking absolutely bearish and we shouldn't really go long in q and in here and there's like a hundred percent chance that we're gonna go down and set the lows that in my opinion is just simply not right to say because there is no certainty in any market at any given moment we are talking about different possibilities i'm just trying to tell you even if we get another five wave up and even if we reach to the target of this beautiful head and shoulder structure you need to be aware of this possible possible a b c flat structure which this is the key on a higher degree might be at that point then into this wave four and then what's next unfortunately another move down into wave five now if this is going to happen i need you to understand this very very clearly it is not going to be a bad sign at all okay this just indicates in like very very short term we may have yet another small move down it's not going to hurt the overall bullish case at all one way or the other as long as i'm not proven otherwise and i promise you it is going to take a lot to prove me otherwise we are having off of this point five wave up into one correction for wave two and after our move down is over or maybe even it's over already and i am wrong what are we going to have a massive move up into wave three and four and five so you see overall in qnt no matter what is going to happen in the short term we are looking magnificent and bullish but you know what maybe maybe after having another small move up we need to manage our expectations because odds are we may end up having just a simple flat structure and what's next according to this count you guessed it right another decent on the downside and i hope i explained everything well and you understood what is going on in quant's price chart anyway if you found any value in my content i would really appreciate if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and follow me on twitter and if you want more maybe you want a complete analysis for your own specific crypto or maybe you want to learn some decent ta in order to be able to make good money in the markets you can become a member and ask me anything you want and until the next update i hope you have a wonderful time with your family and loved ones goodbye